Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular day, where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I'll review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. Number one, there is something wrong with my son. It seems so pointless and ungrateful for me to even complain about what most people would say is nuts. But I have a theory that my 15-year-old son isn't my son. Now, I'm not saying that I think he was either switched at birth or that my wife was had cheated on me back then, but he and he and I don't click at all. Don't get me wrong. He looks like me sounds like me, and even acts like me at times, especially when he's angry or finds something amusing. People are always praising my wife and I for raising such a perfect, well-mannered, intelligent, and good-looking boy who cares about the world and all creatures, great and small. If you ask me, he's a little too perfect. Even when he loses his temper, he's thoughtful and soon apologizes. Some would say that we have a perfect life. We're well off and we live in a beautiful home which is taken care of by my wonderful wife. Some say we're so lucky it hurts. But I'd give anything to have what other people have, even if it meant being poorer. I enjoy seeing the trials and tribulations of others. That's what life is supposed to be all about. But my wife doesn't agree. She loves how perfect her little angel is and goes on and on about how wonderful he is. It makes me want to vomit and scream. The only time she ever lost her temper was six months ago when I told her about a vivid dream I had. It started with my son being a year old again. And I went into his room and saw the window open with the curtains flying and flapping about. I went over to close the window when I felt the hairs on my neck prickle. I slowly turned around and saw an evil looking shadow person leaning over the crib. My instincts kicked in and I raced over to the crib but the creature grabbed my son up and leapt out the window. I yelled for my wife as I ran down the stairs to apprehend the creature as my son screamed in terror. When I made it outside, she came up behind me with our son on her hip. Both were smiling sweetly at me. After that dream, I woke up crying and saying that I finally knew what happened to our son, that we'd been left with a changeling from the other side. My wife was so enraged, she slapped me across the face. She was so hurt that she began to cry. I comforted her and tried to shake the dream off. I'll never forget the next morning at breakfast when my son gave me the strangest smile. He said, I love you, Father. You know that, right? I gulped, nearly choked on my coffee because I was so chilled by the undertone of his trained voice. Yeah, I know that, Daniel. I love you, too. I watched as he stared right through me with his pale green eyes before he looked back at his eggs with a satisfied smile. Just yesterday we went to a crazy new age festival which my wife loves to attend. She and Daniel put on crazy hats and danced with the other nuts while I sipped some god awful herbal smoothie. I nearly choked when I saw a boy watching me from the other side of the field. Something about his eyes and the wistful way he looked at me pulled at my heartstrings. I started to move towards him, but in an instant, he was gone. I could have sworn I saw a dark figure leading him away. I was then distracted by Daniel, who gave me an almost threatening look. Father? Aren't you going to join in? He asked me in a menacing tone. When I saw the pained look in my wife's eyes, I gave in and took his hand. Sure, 
I smiled. I keep telling myself, someday, soon. Number two, the ghost in the tunnel needs a ride home. The most disturbing event in my life happened when I was a young child. Before I first saw the ghost in the tunnel on my way to summer camp, I barely knew what haunted stories were. My father and I were singing and chatting until we started driving through a long, dark tunnel. The atmosphere was creepy and almost surreal as I gasped when the air inside the car became harder to breathe. My father continued talking, but I became increasingly disturbed with the pale, fluorescent lights bouncing off the walls. Then I saw her, a terrifying specter with no pupils, her eyes glowing white as her somber face watched us go by. I screamed, and Dad turned around yelling, What? What's the matter with you? I couldn't explain further than the ghost girl as I pointed to the wall of the tunnel. She seemed to be traveling with us as we moved through the tunnel, impassively staring right through me. Dad craned his neck to see. There's nothing there. You're imagining things. Calm down, he advised. As the car finally came out the other end, the air became normal again. I looked back, but she was gone. I almost forgot about that ghostly girl until my father picked me up at the end of summer camp and we made our way back home. Like, like a typical kid, I excitedly told Dad all about the camp, but I stopped talking when I noticed the unfamiliar tunnel. Are you asleep? He asked. I swallowed the lump in my throat as the darkness descended. The air once again became thick as the fluorescent lights appeared. This time it was like I was seeing visions inside my own mind. A rainy night, skidding tires, and a car in flames. Then the ghostly girl appeared. Her eyes were frightening white and unblinking as she stared right through me. Somehow I understood that she had been killed in that accident, but it didn't make it easier to see her scary face. She seemed angry, although not at me. It almost felt like she was trapped in time, haunting the tunnel forever. I struggled to breathe as I felt her presence start to move inside the car. I couldn't be certain, but it felt like she was trying to come with us to escape her fate that had already been set. As she passed through, like a chilling wind whipping through the car, I watched her being pulled back into the tunnel. I never understood haunted stories until that day. She seemed to be trying to tell me something, although my young mind couldn't grasp what it could be. As we approached the end of the tunnel, I noticed that her frightening, although sad eyes looked away. Like a vacuum, sucking her back in, the tunnel swallowed her up and we pulled away as we drove on. I couldn't shake off her face and, as the years rolled by, I tried to research her story, but to no avail. We moved to another state and I never saw her again. I wonder if it was a dream, as my dad, he doesn't remember. Sometimes her face enters my dreams, beckoning to me with her sad eyes. And now, how about a joke? Two men were sitting next to each other at Murphy's Pub in London. After a while, one bloke looks at the other and says, I can't help but think from listening to you that you're from Ireland. The other bloke responds proudly, Yes, that I am. The first one says, So am I, and whereabout from Ireland might you be? The other bloke answers, 
I am from Dublin, I am. The first one responds, So am I. Mother Mary and Begora, and what street did you live in in Dublin? The other bloke says, A lovely little area it was. I lived on McCleary Street in the old central part of town. The first one says, Faith, and it's a small world. So did I. So did I. And what school would you have been going? The other bloke answers, Well now, I went to St. Mary's, of course. The first one gets really excited and says, And so did I. Tell me, what year did you graduate? The other bloke answers, Well now, let's see. I graduated in 1964. The first one exclaims, The good Lord must be smiling down upon us. I can hardly believe our good luck at winding up in the same place tonight. Can you believe it? I graduated from St. Mary's in 1964 my own self. About this time, Vicky walks up to the bar, sits down and orders a drink. Brian the barman walks over to Vicky, shaking his head and mutters, It's going to be a long night. Vicky asks, Why do you say that, Brian? The Murphy twins are drunk again. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag Mean Gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, Tell all your friends, leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.